asked that much from me Yet what he asked was that I leave The world I knew and everything I own To give my life in service of The one who gave his life before That I might live by faith and not in fear Call to me when I would not come near Saying come on over Lay your worries down and on my shoulder This forgiveness you have found Your heavy burdens Every failure lay them down I am your God, you are my child And you are loved Follow my son Follow my son God, your name is great And we will shout it High into the heavens now The skies they sing your power to the world May our praises rise high above As the smell of incense does And may the nations know how great you are You are the chaser of my Forgiveness you have found Your heavy burdens Every failure lay them down I am your God You are my child And you are loved Still might The sun's far from rising 
rising I'm stuck in the night But you came and you followed the sound of my cries With a still steady hand Bringing new life to what was left to die Oh, you saved me Saved me from this hell clouds see the rocks try to break me and the waves they still might but the sun now is rising won't be stuck in the night but you came and you followed the sound of my cries with a still steady hand bringing new life to what was left to die
Lord, have mercy on us, Christ, have mercy. We are sinful, broken people needing grace. We've gone to find our own way, thinking little of your glory. But we ask for your forgiveness in this place. You are God, hear our cries to you, we pray. Happy Sunday morning to each of you. We are worshiping in the presence of our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit will be the energy and the power that takes these words that we hear and makes sure they get down into the hearts where they grow and prosper. Let me have a prayer with you. Heavenly Father, whatever the week has been, whatever the next week will be, there is one constant in my life and in our life and that is the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May these moments where we worship you be very sacred moments, whether it's here in worship or whether it's when we read the Bible or we come to you in prayer or we're meeting together with our small group. 
May we realize that when we are in your presence, divine and powerful and loving things do occur. Do not your children always ask for the transforming work of the Holy Spirit so that when we're through reading a scripture, when we're through with a prayer, when we're through with a worship service, there is a change in us, sometimes minor, sometimes major. But we can never be in your presence, Lord, without some change occurring. That is the power of your word and your presence. Be with us, Heavenly Father, in our Savior's name. Amen. My dear friends at Reveal, I'm going to invite you to join with me to call to worship. Psalm 145, beginning at verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom, and they shall tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, O Lord, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words. He is kind in all of his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. You give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. God bless your worship. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. All our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. So when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away.
face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away so when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away you're washed away Friends, the Holy Gospel recorded in Matthew chapter 11. Uh, these powerful words and this promise from Jesus. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, and you have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then this promise from our Lord, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. Could fast. 
Those are the words that I cling to. Jesus Christ, my living hope. He has been our hope for the 2,000 years that Christianity has stood since the resurrection of our Lord from the dead. I'm going to have you join with me in the Creed of the Apostles. That creed is 2,000 years old. And it speaks about Jesus Christ being our living hope. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May that faith be your peace. In his name, amen.
Dear friends in Christ, the word balance has many definitions, both as a noun and a verb in Webster's Dictionary. To name just several of them, it can be a stability produced by even distribution of weight on each side of a vertical axis, or it can be an aesthetically pleasing integration of elements, or a mental and emotional steadiness. And the verb can mean to bring something into harmony or proportion. We know that balance is an essential element of the abundant life that God provides for us through the cross of Jesus Christ. We can try to find balance in our life by slowing down, keeping wonder and amazement in our lives, and also balancing work, and even just trying to simplify our lives when we can. In light of our gospel reading for today, we will look at lightening our load. The Greek mathematician, inventor, and astronomer Archimedes said that he could lift the world if he had a lever that was long enough. One of the most discouraging and depressing places to be when we feel weighted down is when we're tired and alone. And most of us have been in that position at one time or another in our lives. We can feel overwhelmed by life and its circumstances. It would be interesting to find out how many of us have had that overwhelming feeling during these times of a viral pandemic, of social injustice, and even the prolonged heat that we're facing here in the high temperatures. When we're feeling like the weight of the world is on our shoulders, we can feel overwhelmed in such a way that we feel like we're drowning and there's no one there to reach out and give us a life preserver. Jesus comes to us and he invites us to lay our burdens down. And those burdens can be many. When we look at the loads that we carry, we discover that much of it, we just can't simply drop and never pick it up. We will have work and school demands. There might be leisure activities, perhaps religious education, education and other types of commitments and a host of other items that can't be neglected. Lightening our load is one way of leveraging what we do rather than lessening the amount of what we do. It's like rolling a large suitcase through an airport instead of having to carry it. The traveler's load is obviously lightened in this way. Burdens literally weigh us down. Burdens rob us of the joys in life. Burdens prevent us from experiencing that abundant life that God gives us through the cross of Christ. For centuries, the words of this gospel text have brought literally comfort to billions of people. And as if he were giving us an unexpected gift, Jesus warmly invites us, saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus' words are an open invitation to lighten our load and to find rest and renewal so that we can continue this journey in our life and in faith in him. Some of the loads that we bury, we should have never picked up. We worry about the loss of our job, our child's performance and success in school, our finances and a host of other items For those things that we cannot control the outcome, we can lighten our load by bringing our worries and those concerns to Jesus in prayer. Usually we have come to Jesus over and over again in prayer until we finally lay things down and we keep them in the hands of Jesus. There are times when we must simply release things to Jesus. We know that we still have to work to accomplish our goals and to finish our tasks, but We release them to Jesus and we acknowledge that God is the one who is in control. We find rest spending personal time with Jesus, being silent and surrounding us, surrounding ourselves in his love and his acceptance. And that's one understanding of Christian contemplation and meditation that we can all do as his people. These are ways that we can get leverage on the loads that we carry that allow us to carry them throughout the day. There's another wonderful gift that God gives to us in lightening our loads, and it's in the gift of community. 
It was St. Paul who wrote in Galatians chapter 6, and he encourages the Christians there and us to bear one another's burdens. And several verses later, he continues. He says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The Christian faith was never meant to be lived in isolation, to never have a type of only me and God attitude that is so prevalent in our American culture today. Being in community means bearing one another's burdens. Bearing burdens is a two-way street. We need to be open with others with our struggles and burdens. To be open to ask for help and to allow people to help us. And we also need to be open to being asked for help and consider it our Christian responsibility to bearing one another's burdens when asked. As a congregation and school that has been here for over 160 years, the Trinity family has been challenged to bear the burdens of others in the past, and we will continue to do that with what we face in the future. We responded positively so many times when asked. We've helped others through moves, through loss of jobs, health issues, and other critical times in their lives. We know that when we give, it feels good also because we're reflecting that love of Christ in our lives. And not only do we bear the burdens of our individual faith community, we also bear other burdens through agencies like Lutheran Church Charities, Lutheran World Relief, Feed My Starving Children, and the Tinley Park chapter of Love, Inc., or Love in the Name of Christ. Jesus not only invites people who are tired and weary to come to him and find rest, he also invites them to take his yoke upon them because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We like the idea of resting in Jesus, but we're not so sure about taking on Jesus' yoke on that invitation. Well, the yoke of Jesus is a burden of love. Jesus tells his disciples, this is my command, that you love one another. The early Christian church was known for their great love for each other. The first great North African theologian was Tertullian. He was born around 160 AD. Tertullian was also the first major theologian to write extensively in Latin as opposed to Greek. He once wrote that he imagined pagans looking at Christians and saying, look how they love one another and how they are ready to die for each other. Jesus specifically asks us to take his yoke upon us. A yoke involves two people, Jesus and you or me. The yoke of Jesus is a training yoke. It's meant to know that Jesus is the one who carries the bulk of that burden. Jesus only gives us what we can carry. And being yoked to Jesus also means doing what Jesus wants us to do. He is the one who leads us and guides us as we walk with him. We have a challenge before us. It's important for us to look at our calendar and see the things that we are involved with and that God is not a part of. We're then invited to get rid of those obligations in our lives. After all, we don't live to live our lives in ways to maybe impress our boss, to meet the expectation of others, or even to, to realize our own goals. We live to be obedient and faithful servants of our God and Lord. Love, it lightens the load. Dads will carry their young children incredible distances at times out of love. Parents will sacrifice out of love. Teachers make the effort and they touch lives because of love. Love empowers us, whether they're big or small actions, anything that can meet needs and change people. The final element of Jesus' invitation in Matthew's gospel is to learn 
from him, to learn of him. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't call us to do things for him here. Instead, he calls us to love him and to learn from him. And when we are with Jesus, we learn about his overwhelming love for us and the Spirit's power that is in our lives. When we're with Jesus, we learn about our total dependence on God and his promise to never leave us or forsake us. When we learn from Jesus, we learn about the hope that comes from faith in an all-powerful, loving God as opposed to the despair in the world that's around us. As we face our burdens each day, there is one thing that we are not to do. That is to complain about the predicament or the situation that we're in. Complaining is our usual response to being overworked and overburdened, but it doesn't work. It doesn't lighten our load. Complaining isn't a very good Christian witness either. The world's not impressed by it. We're not attractive witnesses to Christ when we're tired and grumpy, grumpy and powerless. God has graced us with other ways to deal with the daily burdens and cares of life. We can release our burdens to him. We can allow others to bear our burdens. And we can be empowered to live by love. God gives us the way to lighten our load, to achieve and maintain balance, and to also experience the abundant life that is ours through Christ. Jesus' invitation enables us to be refreshed and renewed by our relationship with him and by the power of the Spirit in our lives. So learn from Jesus. Come to him each day as he is there for you. His never-ending love will hold you up when you need it, and he will always fill you with peace and joy of you knowing that you are his brother or sister, that you are in a family that knows and experiences what it really means to have rest. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us the, the, the true meaning of rest. And as uh, we come to you, Lord, in these days, there are so many things going on. Sometimes it's just one or two things, and other times it, things just seem to pile on us and we don't know where to put them. But you give us that direction, Lord. You tell us to bring it to you, and so we do. And we know that you can handle it. You handled the, the burden of the cross and you went all the way to die for us and for all people for our sin. And you have the power to live as you showed it on that Easter day and as you continue to live in our lives even now. So bless us, Lord. May we be a people who not only loves you but also witnesses to you in the ways that you know best for us. So bless us this day, keep us safe, keep our health, and keep our joy always in Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. My enormous thanks for the three things that you as a congregation and you watching online do on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis. I thank you for your prayers, your prayers for yourself, your family, this country, doctors and nurses, jobs, and the prayers that you offer for your church and for your school, if you are so blessed. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your acts of kindness, which touch other people's lives and help you and I grow. Because whenever an act of kindness is done, there is a growth that takes place within us. And thirdly, I thank you for your offerings. The faithfulness with regards to those offerings, with you saying... There is a percentage I want to give back to God, and I will do it with joy and enthusiasm. Uh, I thank you for those offerings, whether it's online, whether you're bringing them when you come to the service, or whether you're mailing them in. That is what has allowed us to stay strong in our ministry, 
during these four very difficult months. Thank you. If you would bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you realizing that when the prayer of confession is true in our life, and when we wake up with an abundance of fear and worry, or when that comes to us at the end of the day after we've watched the news, we thank you, Lord, that we can lift our eyes to you. Lift my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. And all of a sudden, at least for me, when I lift my eyes to you, when I say, God, you've got this, my fears and worries disappear. Your power, your love, your wisdom. We have nothing to fear. Lord, be with Mary Compton, Victoria Butterfield, and Al Willey as they continue their battles with cancer hand in hand with you. Be with Gordon Harmon and his family as his brother was called home to heaven very tragically in a car accident. May you grant them the peace and the promise of the resurrection. We rejoice with you at the birth of babies to Terry and Justin Gherkin, and we rejoice at upcoming baptisms, John and Kelly Majerski and their little child. Heavenly Father, you are forever the God of the hills and the valleys, and we come to you with our joys thanking you, and we come to you with our trials knowing that you are right there, hand in hand with us. Such things we ask in the name of him who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, God be with you this week and every single moment of every single day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, grant you all of his blessing and all of his peace. Amen. You came for criminals and every Pharisee. You came for hypocrites, even one like me. Carried sin and shame, the guilt of every man, the weight of all I've done, nailed into your hands. Oh, your love bled for me. Oh, your Grace, I've seen and tasted it. It's running through my veins. I can't escape its grip. In you, my soul is safe. You cover everything. Oh, your love bled for me. Oh, your
Stay the same. 